Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and on the menu is Rakdos Pyromancer, a red-black graveyard deck featuring a Dreadhorde Arcanist and Young Pyromancer as the centerpieces. Young Pyromancer a 2-mana, two 2-1 two Human Shaman, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to make a 1-1 one -one red elemental creature token. And then Dreadhorde Arcanist, a 2-mana 1-3 zombie wizard with Trample. And whenever the Arcanist attacks, we may cast, target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the Arcanist's power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. And then that card also gets exiled. And the Arcanist pairs quite nicely with the Pyromancer, as it will allow us to make even more 1-1 one -one tokens. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we also have the full playset of Archfiend's Vessel, a 1 mana 1-1 one -one Human Cleric with Lifelink, and when the Vessel enters a battlefield if it entered from our graveyard, or if we cast it from our graveyard, we get to exile it, and if we do we get to make a 5-5 Black Demon Creature token with Flying. And we've got a few ways of reanimating the Archfiend's Vessel from the graveyard. First off you might have noticed Allures of the Dream Den in the companion slot, of course a nice late game tool the deck has access to, and if we play Lurus, we can re play the Archfiend's Vessel from our graveyard, which will in turn make it into a demon token. Then we also have the full play set of Claim to Fame, a new Aftermath card from Amoncat Remastered. Sadly, Claim to Fame has converted mana cost 3, so we can get it back with the Dreadhorde Arcanist, even though the claim half is only 1 mana, and says we can return target creature card with converted mana cost 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So not only can we get back our Young Pyromancer and Dreadhorde Arcanist, but we can also get back our Archfiend's Vessel for just 1 mana, and once again turn it into a 5-5 demon. And after playing Claim, we can also play the Fame half from the graveyard thanks to Aftermath, giving target creature plus 2 plus 0 and haste until end of turn, so that also pairs quite nicely with our Dreadhorde Arcanist, as we can potentially play Arcanist and then give it haste and attack, and cast another instant or sorcery from the graveyard. And now that Arcanist has 3 power thanks to Fame, we can potentially even replay a Call of the Death Dweller from the graveyard, which is the final way we have of getting back an Archfiend's Vessel from the graveyard and turning it into a 5-5 Demon, as Call of the Death Dweller can return up to two target creature cards with total converted mana cost three or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and we can distribute a death touch counter and a menace counter among those creatures as well. Then moving on, we've got two copies of Innocent Blood, a one mana sorcery that makes each player sacrifice a creature. So this can be a nice removal spell, especially against the Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck, which sometimes just has the one massive creature in play, which they can sometimes protect with Karametra's Blessing, but Innocent Blood gets around it since it doesn't actually target the opposing creature. And Innocent Blood can also function as a bit of a sacrifice outlet to put our Archfiend's Vessel or Stitcher Supplier in the graveyard, which is usually the goal with those two cards. And of course, if we've got some 1-1 one -one tokens from Young Pyromancer, we can easily sacrifice those to the Innocent Blood as well. So we can use our cheap burn spell in shock to deal with smaller creatures from the opponent, and then Innocent Blood can hopefully clean up their bigger stuff that doesn't die to our shock. And then we also have the full playset of Stitcher Supplier, a 1 mana 1 1 that when it enters a battlefield or dies mills the top 3 cards, and there's no shortage of graveyard synergy in this deck. We can just fill the graveyard with additional instants and sorceries to get back with our Dreadhorde Arcanist. If we mill over Croxi we can more easily escape it. If we put additional creatures in the graveyard we can also get them back with Claim to Fame or Call of the Death Dweller, and we're very happy to put an Archfiend's Vessel in the graveyard as well. So a ton of graveyard synergy, of course, with Lurus as well. And then moving on, we also have the full playset of Thoughtseize. This is one of the more appealing one-mana instants and sorceries we can be playing in Historic, great at disrupting any combo decks, and we can also get it back with our Dreadhorde Arcanist, making it even better. And then we've got the full playset of Village Rites, a 1 mana instant, and as an additional cost to cast the Village Rites, we have to sacrifice a creature, and then we get to draw two cards, so a nice bit of card advantage, especially when you consider that we don't mind sacrificing the Stitcher Supplier and Archfiend's Vessel, and we can easily generate some 1-1 tokens with Young Pyromancer, so there's no shortage of sacrifice fodder in this deck. And then finally we've got the full playset of Shock, 1 mana instant, that can deal 2 damage to any target, so pairs quite nicely with the Dreadhord Arcanist and Young Pyromancer when facing small creature decks. And then besides our 4 copies of Dreadhorde Arcanist and Young Pyromancer, we also have 2 copies of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. We can first play it for 2 mana, making the opponent discard a card, and then later we can escape it out of the graveyard for 4 mana, exiling 5 other cards, and then we get access to a 6-6 six, six Elder Giant that makes the opponent discard a card whenever it attacks, and potentially dealing some additional damage on top. 
And then the Kroxa also synergizes quite nicely with Village Rites. If we have one additional mana when we play Kroxa, we can potentially sacrifice Kroxa to the Village Rites with the trigger on the stack. That way we don't actually have to sacrifice a creature on the battlefield. And then of course we've got our four copies of Claim to Fame and two copies of Call of the Death Dweller to recur even more creatures from the graveyard. And then a mana base, no copies of any castles, because I do want a lot of untapped black sources with how many 1-drops we want to play on turn 1. And then four mountains in addition to the 8 swamps, four blood crypts, four dragon skull summits, and two fabled passage, which can also put an additional card in the graveyard to make it easier to escape Croxa. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Don't hate it, the vessel can be sacrificed to the rights and then we can claim to get it back and turn it into a 5-5 demon. Would have liked an extra untapped source here, but hopefully we can draw an extra land along the way. And what about just playing the vessel on turn 1? That way on turn 2 I can village rights, maybe drawing into an untapped black source so we can still thought seize. Up against Curve Prospector, nice target for shock. Typically speaking, the Goblin matchup can be pretty rough, but cards like Shock are definitely nice, and so is Thoughtseize to take away Muxus. So, I think this turn, given that we drew the land, I don't necessarily have to Village Rites. So let's hit for one. Of course I would be ecstatic with a trade. And then we're gonna end up taking a look with Thoughtseize. Wow, that's a lot of Muxus. So no real point in taking Muxes, I guess. We'll just take the Chain Whirler. And then I guess we'll pass a turn. If they play Chieftain, I can kill it. Point's gonna hit for one. Yeah, I guess we'll just shock the Prospector here. That's fine. Next turn we can Village Rites plus Claim to get back our Vessel and make a 5-5. But let's attack first. Ooh, Dreadhorde Arcanists. Yeah, I guess we'll play the Arcanist first here. Doesn't apply as much pressure as making a 5-5, but potentially lets me get back a Thought Seize as well. And of course we can also shock the Chieftain pretty easily. Alright, so a wealth of options. Can even do the Croxa plus Village Rites trick, which actually isn't too bad here. So let's do that. I'll probably need to go into full control to pull it off. And then I don't really need a third red source, so we'll just get another Swamp. Play Croxa with full control enabled. And with the trigger on the stack, we can Village Rites. Sacrificing Croxa. Draw two. And then Claim gets back the Vessel. Makes a 5-5, Arcanist attacks and shocks the Chieftain. And next turn we can potentially escape Croxa as well. Opponent is pretty far from casting Muxus. It's gonna be an instigator. And a prospector. Alright, the prospector is scary, but we have another shock at the ready. So once again, a lot of options. I don't hate the idea of playing the vessel. And then with the Arcanist attack, we can replay a Village Ride, sacking the Vessel, setting up the Claim as well. And then Shock can take care of the Prospector. So, play Vessel, attack, get back Village Rites. Because we don't really need to Thought Seize one of the two copies of Muxus when we can prevent the opponent from casting it in the first place. Opponent takes it, and then I guess we can even play the Young Pyromancer first, because why not? So much value. Claim gets back Vessel, and last but not least, Shock to take care of the Prospector, 
And that should seal the deal here. Alright, Phyrexian Tower. Our opponent was very close to casting a Moxus here in the end. But not quite. And the Pyromancer deck able to completely dismantle the Goblin's game plan. So that was quite satisfying. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Can sack the vessel to the village rights. Thought sees for a bit of disruption. And now even claim to reanimate the vessel. So I could Thought Seize on turn 1, but I think I prefer playing the Vessel. And then we can hold on to the Thought Seize until the turn before our opponent could do something scary. Aether Spell Bomb. So this might be a Kethys combo deck, in which case I do want to take a look before they can play Kethys. But we can attack for one first. Spell Bomb is a nice answer to the 5-5 five five Demon token, so... Maybe we want to wait for the opponent to sacrifice a Spell Bomb before we take any further action on that front. Alright, there's Kethys. Uro is gonna be a tough cookie. But yeah, gotta take the Kethys here. And then, end of turn, we'll probably sacrifice the vessel to the village rights. Opponent sacrifice a spellbomb to draw cards, so don't need to worry about it bouncing my vessel. And then Uro. So we'll village rights the vessel. And the mountain's a decent draw, although I guess we can play a summit. And go Paramancer plus Claim. And that also sets up our next village rights. Alright, so we've got a bit of pressure in play now. Our opponent definitely capable of just winning the game out of nowhere. Wishclaw Talisman can also search up for one of the combo pieces. Overgrown Tomb untapped. And our opponent passes. Innocent Blood can be a nice answer to an escaped Uro. So we've got options. I could play another Pyromancer first. I guess I don't mind fetching with my Fabled Passage. And then we'll attack. Could have also used Fame to give the Paramancer haste, but it didn't seem necessary. And then I'll Village Rite's main phase in case we find another Thoughtseize. Alright, there it is. Let's have a look. Just a Mox Amber, all right. So they don't have a ton to work with. They can potentially escape an Uro. Opponent wanted to cycle the Triome, which is why they play the land untapped. But even with the three life from Uro, they might still be dead here. It's going to be a Diligent Excavator. I guess the Talisman could search up another Kethys, and then they can start playing stuff out of the graveyard to potentially combo off. So we'll see. I guess it didn't keep up white mana, so it can be Kethys here. And our opponent concedes, maybe they mistapped their mana, or they are dead on board anyways, but we had a pretty dominant board presence here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yorion Skynomad deck. And yeah, we've got a keepable hand, so hopefully the supplier can mill some goodies. 
And that also helps us escape Croxa. Arcanist is a good draw. Opponent on Esper and Thought Erasure probably takes away the Arcanist, is my guess. So this could be a Doom Foretold strategy. Opponent does indeed take our Dreadhorde Arcanists. Another Supplier. Alright, if I didn't draw the Supplier, I probably would have just played Crocs on this turn. But since we did, I guess I'll attack for one. And then Village Rights. And then if we don't find another one drop, I can still play my Stitcher Supplier number two. Claim. Claim could get back Dreadhorde Arcanists. Yeah, that's probably worth it. And that can maybe get back a Thought Seize from the Graveyard if it survives. Thought Erasure can take away another Dreadhorde Arcanist, perhaps. Probably just play another Supplier and play Croxa, and then we can potentially escape next turn. So we'll play Supplier first. All right, it's just a bunch of Planeswalkers. We'll take Narset for now. They are missing double blue, but it's the one they can cast right away here. And then we'll Croxa. And another Teferi gone. So if the Arcanist survives, we're in a decent spot. Opponent puts Yorion in hand. Alright, no double red to escape Croxa, sadly. Although I probably should just try and take away Teferi with another Thought Seize while we can. And then I can maybe put Lurus in my hands. Alright, take Teferi, leave them with Yorion. And then we'll just put Lurus in hands. And keep up shock. And Innocent Blood's a decent answer to Yurion if they just played out as a blocker. Gonna hang on to the shock for now. So we'll Innocent Blood. And then we can escape Croxa, get the opponent's last cards. Get rid of some lands here. And our opponent concedes just super far behind. They're going to be empty-handed facing a Croxa Arcanist. The Arcanist could have maybe flashed back another claim to get back a second Arcanist. So no shortage of uh, value here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? Four lands is a bit much. Village Rides could combo with Croxa, but only turn three, so it's a bit slow. Yeah, don't love it. We're facing a Lurus deck, could be Spirit Dancer or the Mirror Match. Shock is nice against Spirit Dancer if they don't have turn one Selfless Savior. But I feel like this is going to be a little bit too slow, so I would also just like to mulligan to maybe find a Thought Seize. And this is way better. Turn one Thought Seize to take away any key creatures, and Innocent Blood can also be a nice removal spell in the matchup. What do I put on the bottom? Maybe one of the Arcanists. And then we'll lead with Thought Seize. And our opponent is indeed playing the Aura deck. Don't care about Savior too much when our removal is Innocent Blood. The scariest creature overall is probably the Vanguard, although Herald is also tricky to interact with. But I'll take the Adanto Vanguard. And then we'll play Arcanists. And hope to draw 
some sacrifice fodder to go with village rights and innocent blood here. Staggering insights, so worst case scenario I can innocent blood to sacrifice both creatures. Shock also a nice one. So let's kill that right now. And hit for one. Replay Thoughtseize. And they picked up Alsaid, Arcane Flight. So they have double blue, so they won't necessarily be able to play a one drop and enchant it with both enchantments. Which one's more annoying here? Probably the Alsaid, given that it has lifelink. And then we'll pass. Still need to draw another creature here, Stitcher Supplier and Archfiend's Vessel would be great. Opponent is gonna enchant a savior. And then I guess there's still Lurus we need to worry about from the opponents. I guess I can attack with Arcanists, just shock the opponent's face, and then... We can uh, Village Rites Arcanist and Innocent Blood. Is shocking the opponent's face really worth it? Maybe I'm better off just playing the Village Rites now. In case I find something more useful. Young Pyromancer, that's a good one. So I think I do want to play the Pyromancer now. I do give them a window to potentially play an additional creature that they can sack to the Innocent Blood. But I do want to start generating some tokens that I can then also sack to the village rights. Opponent hits for four, puts us to eight. Vessel's a great draw. Alright, how do we sequence things? So if I innocent blood, I will get the token before I have to sacrifice something, so we can just sack the token. But I might just want to play vessel first. And then village rights, I probably want to fetch first with the passage. I wouldn't mind drawing Arcanist. Get probably just another swamp. Don't envision needing triple red. Well, village rights, sacking vessel. And Arcanist is a nice draw, but now I probably want to innocent blood here before it's too late. And then Claim can get back Arcanists or Vessel making a 5-5. Next turn our opponent can play Lurus and then replay like a Mistcloaked Herald. Although next turn I will be able to play Arcanist and give it haste, so that's gonna be nice. And then leaving that shock in the graveyard earlier might pay off. So let's reanimate Vessel. Yeah, I can play Arcanist, give it haste, and then shock Lurus potentially. Suppose they could also decide to escape the Sentinel's Eyes on Lurus and play Miscloaked Heralds. That would play around Innocent Blood and Shock to an extent. So that's what we don't want to see. But if they just put an enchantment on Lurus, we'll be in great shape. Yeah. Staggering insight, that's perfect. So now we can Arcanists. Give it haste. Attack with everyone. Flashback Innocent Blood. And sacrifice the 1 1 token. And now our opponent's top decking at 7 life. And we even have a village rights to refuel. And there we go, so Innocent Blood definitely coming in handy in this matchup. And once again we managed to dismantle one of the tier 1 strategies in Historic, at least for best of one. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't have an untapped Black Source on turn 1 sadly. But I might just fetch a Swamp and on turn 2 we can double spell. Definitely not an ideal draw, but I think it's still okay. Multiple creatures we don't mind sacking to the village rides, a bit of interaction with the shock. And now even claim to get back Archfiend's Vessel. Facing a Zangoth Trium. 
and a growth spiral, so maybe a Sultai mid range or ramp deck. Which is going to be a tough matchup since they can definitely go over the top of our game plan here if they ramp into an Ugin. Probably just play Vessel and then end of turn village rights. And since I kind of need the card draw. Underworld Dreams, interesting. So I guess this is a Emergent Ultimatum deck, and Underworld Dreams is kind of a package they can get alongside the uh, seven mana sorcery to win the game, and then like Omniscience can be the third card they get. All right, so what are my options? I guess I can play Stitcher Supplier. And if we mill another vessel, I can double claim to get double vessel in play. If not, I can still play a vessel and then claim the other one. And the token is even costed in case my opponent has an extinction event. Opponent's ramping towards that emergent ultimatum. We gotta try and find a thought seize to take it away. So for now, what's my plan? I could also claim to get back Stitcher Supplier, try and mill some more goodies. Could shock my own vessel and then reanimate it with Call of the Death Dweller. I wouldn't mind finding another village rights to sacrifice our one drops here. I think we claim the Stitcher Supplier because we need to fill the graveyard with more creatures here. Did find a young Pyromancer and Arcanist, although I can only get back one with the Call of the Death Dweller. So for now... I might want to just use fame on the vessel. Attack with all. And then end of turn I might shock my own Archfiend's vessel. And then we can call the Death Dweller back vessel and maybe a Dreadhorde Arcanist. So points up to 7 mana, double Uro, to Panther own life total. So next turn we could already see Emergent Ultimatum, which is going to be pretty tough to beat. So I really would like to find a Thought Seize here. So I can kill my own Vessel to make an extra 5-5 five five next turn, or I can kill Supplier. I guess if I kill Supplier, I can potentially mill Thoughtseize and then Call of the Death Dweller can get back Arcanist and we can give it haste with Fame so I can Thoughtseize right away. So yeah, let's uh, kill the Supplier. Alright, didn't find anything we wanted, but Village Rights could be good. So... I think I do Village Rites the Supplier over the Vessel again, for the same reasoning. I could mill a Thought Seize, maybe draw into an Arcanist, and then play the Arcanist, give it haste with Fame, and still get something back from the Graveyard. Did not draw what we wanted. I can escape a Croxa, get one of their two cards, but that's not going to be enough. Call it the Death Dweller, can get back. Croxa as well, I suppose, but that's not gonna help. So, I guess I'll just escape Croxa then. Get rid of some lands.
this card's omniscience, which is part of the ultimatum package. And alright, Bonin just had peer into the abyss to kill us with the underworld dreams. So they didn't even need the emergent ultimatum, they just had both one of combo pieces in hand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lurus of the Dream Den. And we've got a Thoughtseize, so if they're on the Spirit Dancer deck, Thoughtseize plus Arcanist is going to be great, and so is Shock. If it's a mirror match, this hand's also serviceable, so I'll keep. And we will lead with turn one Thoughtseize, especially if it's the mirror match. I want to be able to take away an opposing Thoughtseize. I guess a Rangdos sleeve does kind of indicate maybe the mirror match. Pretty important that Arcanist resolves. Alright, it is a mirror match. And uh, we do have a shock to answer Pyromancer. Croxa is fine. So I think the biggest threat is probably just a claim to fame, because that can get back the Pyromancer. And the village rights won't have a great target until turn 3 when they can Croxa plus village rights. There's a Paramancer, and this is gonna work out beautifully. Play room Paramancer, shock the opponents, and Arcanist can Thought Seize again, making another token. And now we're just hoping to draw like a village right to start drawing some cards. Opponent's got another Paramancer in hand, and a village right I guess we'll take. The village rights and then shock and deal with the pyromancer. Opponent just concedes since they're pretty far behind. I mean, the game definitely wasn't over yet. It's not like we're killing them in two attacks, but uh, we were definitely advantaged. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty awkward. No red mana. Lots of village rights. It's kind of funny, we could even thought seize our own Pyromancer, get it back with Claim, just to get a Pyromancer out there without red mana. But that's probably not a play I want to make. Yeah, let's take a mulligan. This hand's a little bit more balanced. And then I can probably afford to bottom Blood Crypts. It does remove the option of a turn 1 shock, which can be important in some matchups. But I don't want to take any unnecessary damage. And I probably just want to play Supplier on turn 1 anyway. Ether Spellbomb, so a Cathas combo deck. Claim can get back Arcanist, perhaps. Aha, uh -huh, Grixis. So this is an Underworld Breach deck instead of a Cathas deck, but it's pretty much the same concept. So what am I doing here? Also don't hate the idea of just playing a Pyromancer. Because there's nothing for me to really get back with the Arcanist. I guess next turn I could like double shock the Excavator. I guess we'll attack first. Bowen probably takes it. But if they block I can finish off Excavator with my shock as well. And then claim the Arcanist. Or maybe claim the other Pyromancer in the graveyards and shock, but I'll just play Pyromancer for now. Witching well, Pun can mill for two. And Amory, all right. Definitely something we want to shock. Village rights is nice. So let's start there. I 
Archfiend's Vessel in the graveyard, which I can turn into a 5-5 as well. Not sure if that's better than getting back Arcanist here. Arcanist is potentially better since it gets back Village Rides for more card draw. Yeah, let's do that and then I can shock Emery. And then we would love to find maybe a Thought Seize to take away an Underworld Breach before it's too late. So that's why digging with the Village Rides towards a Thought Seize could be nice. Sacrifice a Spell Bomb just to draw a card. No interest in bouncing Arcanist. As our opponent digs for their combo pieces. It's going to be a Mox Amber, can mill for two, mills Emery. Not sure if they thought about the sequencing with this cry there, or if they actively wanted to mill Emery. Another village rights. So no lack of options, that's for sure. Don't hate just playing village rights to begin with. In case we want to maybe double thought seize. Although I guess I could also Croxa plus Thoughtseize. And then I'll fetch up a mountain, maybe should have started there. Just to thin out the deck a little bit. Get back village rights, sacking a token. And then I could Croxa plus claim the Croxa just to empty my opponent's hand. Next turn I can play Arcanist, give it haste with fame to get something else from the graveyard. Discards Underworld Breach. Get back Crocs again. And our opponent concedes. Alright, sweet. So the discard, even though it wasn't with Thoughtseize, was uh, still good enough here with Croxa. So yeah, our deck seems to be performing quite well. It's definitely a deck that has seen a decent amount of play so far. People are still fine-tuning their deck lists. There's definitely a lot of variations of this Aragdos Pyromancer deck. But overall, I've been having a blast playing it. Definitely reminds me of playing some of those modern decks with all this one-mana interaction. A ton of options, given that all the spells are so cheap. And with a very full graveyard, it's almost like your graveyard is just an extension of your hand, giving you even more options. And if you do want to customize the deck for best of three, there's a ton of great sideboard options available. Cling to Dust is a nice one, as a one mana instant that can function as graveyard hate, can maybe also gain a bit of life back against the burn decks, since I imagine the burn matchup can be pretty tough since we take so much damage in game one of our own Thoughtseize, although that's probably a card we can take out. And then Cling to Dust also synergizes with Young Pyromancer and Red Horde Arcanist. We can potentially bring in additional 1-mana discard effects with Duress if we think Thoughtseize is not enough, or if we want to take out Thoughtseize against the burn decks. Then we can also play a Braid as a 2-mana instant that can deal 3 damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. So a nice answer to maybe a Graph Digger's Cage, which could prevent us from reanimating our creatures, and can also deal with Godfarer's Gift. And uh, then you can also play Redcap Melee as a 1-mana instant that can deal with the red creatures. So another great card to bring in against the red decks. So those are just some of the cards you could consider in the sideboard if you want to play this in best of three. But overall, definitely recommend the deck as it's a ton of fun and has a ton of play to it as well. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.